Hey, I'm Fight the Flat Earth. Welcome back to the channel that lures stupidity into a windowless van. It's been a crazy couple of weeks for me. My 5,000 subs week-long celebration was an absolute blast. Then I got porn bombed during a stream and it nearly killed my channel and has earned my channel a community strike and an inability to stream for 90 days. But the community had my back and there was an influx of support and donations on my PayPal and new patrons. So thank you to everyone who has supported me in any way. I'm disabled, I can't walk, I can't work and this has become my prime source of income. So when the ability to li uh, live stream was taken away, my ability to actually provide for my family was severely affected. I'm working on my Patreon and will be making a Patreon only video real soon as well as introducing more benefits and stuff for different tiers. So if you want to join, it's patreon.com forward slash fight the flat earth. But anyway, let's have a look what stupid shit the Flurf Collective is saying. Today, I'm a pathetic shill comic book nerd who got my ass handed to me when I went over to America. Stick around to find out why. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. <laughs> They still aren't getting it, are they? Have you any idea how many stupid ass comments I've seen? But the thing is I get so many, I might miss some. If you guys are in my comments um, having an argument with a dumbass flirt and they say something particularly stupid, then please screenshot it and tweet it to me at Fight Flat. You know what, in fact, if you see them say anything stupid on the internet anywhere, just screenshot that and send it to me, even post it in my Discord. On with the comments. First up is Gary Wubba Wubba Bang Bang with this load of bollocks. Well, if you were to take a camera 20 foot of elevation and start filming, then lower the camera slowly down to just above the ground, you will see horizon line change and get closer and obscure things bottom first. The horizon is not a physical barrier, but it is an optical limit of angular resolution determined by the elevation of the observer. No curvature involved whatsoever in obscuring the bottom of objects. Wait, Gary Webby Bum Bum? Are you saying the horizon is determined by angular resolution? I mean, what? Yeah. You do know that you can see things past the horizon, right? So why can we see them? Where does the angular resolution come into that? Do you think the horizon like is as far as we can see? Like it's a wall going up. Well, Gary, I'd like you to explain these photos taken by BM Furball Pancake Hero. Can you explain why the fin of the ship and the turbine seem to disappear when you get lower and then reappear when you get higher? Yet their angular resolution doesn't seem to change. Gary, do you think before you type? Next up, somebody who wants to make us all laugh. Hey, everyone! Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. For a good laugh, Google image search JAXA space. If think NASA photos were real, then these images will surely change your mind. No full stop. So why, why is that funny? Because when I think of JAXA, I think of the Himawari 8, which is like the perfect proof of the globe. So why would you point this out to me? I've got a challenge for you, Flurfs. Using the Himawari 8 website, look at some cloud patterns and then go to a live webcam from that area and look at the clouds. I challenge you to find me one cloud pattern that doesn't match with a live cam and post a video showing it. I mean, it can't happen because the Himawari 8 is getting live images from space, which no matter how many times you say it, isn't fake. So, was it funny because it disproves the flat earth? Or are you just changing the meaning of words again? Because I think I might need to write a flirt fictionary to note all these new meanings to words. Next, we have a returning commenter who, who says something so stupid, I think I may have passed out the first time I read it. A bit of context, he was having a conversation with someone in my comments called Jeffrey Brown, who told him people had been to the South Pole and they have different stars there. He lives in the Southern Hemisphere. I mean, he said that even though there can't be a hemisphere on, on, on a flat earth because, you know, a, a sphere. Yeah, the ceremonial South Pole, laughy face emoji, and they don't. All the stars revolve around Polaris. How about you go actually research flat earth and find all the answers you're looking for? You spend enough time with useless comments showing your stupidity. Well, Andy, your stupidity just reached over 9,000. Well done, that's a new record. To live in the Southern Hemisphere and yet claim all stars rotate around Polaris is a special kind of special. So is this Polaris? 
or where these two opposite rotating fields of stars seem to meet. They're all orbiting Polaris, are they? Which can be seen below the equator, can it? See, he doesn't stop there, though. Jeffrey Brown, there, there's no northern and southern star trails, just star trails that circle Polaris. Uh, and Jeffrey Brown, and no, star trails are the same way here. You're just a sucker to fraud channels. Laughy face emoji. Really, Andy? So you see the same stars in the southern hemisphere as well as the northern hemisphere. Please tell me you're just a troll and not evidence of backwards evolution. Next up is this fucking hot mess. Where's the so-called curvature? Prove the curvature. When are NASA sending up another rocket banana? Space is a hoax. Astronaut. Direct sunlight. The firmament. Sea. Level. Ground. Level. Plane. Equals. Flat. E.E.T. You can believe the PS2 quality CGI. But I've seen better quality CGI on PS3. What the hell is that? I don't even know what I'm reading. Okay, number one, what the fuck, dude? I'm dyslexic and even I make more coherent sentences. I mean, most of the time. Number two, here's a direct link to some curvature. Number three, sea level is the same at any point on the globe, meaning if you're 30,000 feet above sea level, you're 30,000 feet above sea level at any point on the globe. And also, yes, you get better CGI on the PS3 than the PS2. That's what happens when a new console generation gets released. The graphical fidelity tends to increase. I'm pretty sure this guy's broken, so um, let's, let's just move on. It's amazing that so many people are incapable of breaking free from the globe religion, even though it goes against all common sense. This channel doesn't have any intelligent and well-prepared flat earthers as guests. Well, Dom Dukes, first off, I'm sure all flat earthers I've spoken to are going to be delighted to hear you call them unintelligent and unprepared. So how about you find me an intelligent flat earther because I've not met one yet. And no one needs to break free from the globe religion because there is no such thing. Also, when you find an intelligent and well-prepared flat earther, make sure they have an explanation for the effects of gravity because not one of them has ever managed to explain things falling without using gravity. Ah, but have you eliminated the possibility that there's a bunch of little invisible men who put ropes around everything and pull it down? That information is highly class... I mean... Um, what? Don't be ridiculous. Next. When you do my comments on your shitty little show, do not do it in some fruity ass English accent. English accents are so weak on men. I guess that's why you got your ass handed to you when you came over to America. Laughy face emoji. Okay, hands emoji. Where's the punctuation and is your cap slot stuck on? Jason, chill. Who hurt you, man? Was it an English person? And why are you shouting? When did I get my ass handed to me in America? I hope there's no more from this guy. It looks like to me, heliocentric have had over 2,000 years to prove this and nothing. No one has ever measured a curve in that spot that I think is flat. Let me go measure that spot that I think is flat. Oh well, the lasers and infrared cameras say that spot is not flat. You have nothing. You have absolutely nothing but your little green lantern imagination. Pathetic. And I'm so happy that you guys are being phased out. Yes, Jason. And can you believe it? We did figure it out. Conclusively, you are either unwilling or too stupid to understand and accept all the evidence that we give. And what spot are you talking about? Some context, please. And come on. A Green Lantern's imagination is his greatest weapon because using the power of all will of all living beings funneled through a power ring, they can create anything they can think of. I'm going to stop talking now because I am a nerd, aren't I? Um, more Jason? Our flat earthers live on a tiny disc flying through space. No full stops or anything again in this whole... Th oh, bear with me, guys. This one's going to be hard. This is your shell propaganda. The lack of knowledge of flat earth makes you fucking retarded, especially when you're debating people that have done the footwork and research. Side note. Do you realise that you think space is real solely because I religion forced you to believe this? Jews, Jesuits and Catholics forced Copernicus to release his heliocentric model. The Catholics being a Roman religious power saturated everyone would this heliocentric model. You believe in space because the Catholics told you to fucking retard. Where do I start with you Jason? Seriously, Jews, Jesuits, the Catholics, they forced me to believe the earth is... What in the name of science are you babbling about man? And stop calling me a shill, I'm quite clearly not a shill. I swear, 
I'm not a shill. Does Jason have any more to say? Yes, he does. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Sorry. You show your avid want to believe in something fake with the type of clothes you put on. You're a comic book nerd and you're a Star Wars nerd. Oh, oh look, at you use some punctuation. There's some question marks there. You want this shit to be real, even though it flies in the face of all reality. You, sir, are the most indoctrinated of the indoctrinated. Oh, well, there's no full stop. He, he lost again. So let me get this straight. Comic books and Star Wars are part of my indoctrination. What do you morons have against fun and... You must be right laugh at parties. Anyway, sci-fi movies and comic books are not indoctrination and neither is education. Let's go to the remedial classroom to explain why. Okay, Mr. Royd. Dell, pay attention. Don't get annoyed. You'd be outside playing as well. You'd actually listened. You failed the assignment for last week because... Okay, soft lad, show me practical examples of gas pressure being maintained about a container or water on a spinning ball is not the correct answer to what is the difference between education and indoctrination. So take some notes and I'll go through them now. Education involves the seeking of facts and learning about what is the truth and what is not. Indoctrination is aimed at influencing people to believe in facts without being able to back up these newfound facts with anything but opinion. Education can be directly supported by data that is derived from facts, Indoctrination tends to use language that encompasses everything, referring to all or every. Education points out that there are different solutions, often to the same problem. Indoctrination poses the belief that there is only one solution to a problem. Education uses statistical analysis to encourage thought towards reasoning and proposed solution finding. Indoctrination often uses statistics but has offered no analysis of size, duration, control subjects, criteria or duration of the gathering of those statistics. Education is unbiased, it is founded in fact and, and isn't there to persuade anyone to come up with a certain belief. Education is a development of one's own beliefs based on the facts that are discovered throughout the process. Indoctrination has an agenda. It is used to encourage the embracing of another's beliefs and develop blinding and complete agreement with those beliefs. Okay, Dell, if you take the notes for that, you can go outside and join the class for the last five minutes of break. Okay, next comment. What a joke! One theory, imaginary fairy tale that cannot be proven. It continues to be an imaginary fairy tale until proven otherwise. Two, a bunch of jagovs in a basement and agreed upon some fake shit. Laughy face emoji, okay hands emoji. No proof of a bow, buddy. If you do not provide any evidence that is backed by scientific experiment in your next comment, that will be enough to call a mistrial due to lack of evidence from the accuser slash plaintiff plus heliocentric slash you. Oh God, Jason again, I'm sorry. Look, just, just go back to the remedial classroom. Okay, before the end of the day, guys, I want you to take one note and go home and learn this because you guys are constantly saying this and it makes you all sound really stupid. So there is a difference between scientific theory and the common vernacular usage of the word theory. The word theory means just a hunch, but in science, a theory is a powerful explanation for a broad set of observations to be accepted by the scientific community. A theory must be strongly supported by many different lines of evidence. Scientific theories are broad explanations for a wide range of phenomena. They are concise. A normal theory is just a guess. It's just a hunch. So please, over the weekend, just learn the difference between those two because you're just embarrassing yourselves when you keep saying it. Right guys, that's all the stupid I've got time for right now. Sorry this is a little shorter and a little later than planned. I've been a bit under the weather lately and I'm sorry about that. Um, but I will be back real soon with a new episode of Explaining Simple Stuff to Flurfs, focusing on gravity. And then I get to work on Jaronism's episode of Flurfs Are Idiots. I'm also back on the Non Sequitur show on Saturday. But until then, thanks for watching. And remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat earth. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny star. Yeah!